dance, 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 dance. Dance, dance to death. Legolas slowly but surely. Not slowly, fast actually. Look this. Oh, 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 my screen was literally. Oh. Look, today for the first time ever we're gonna cast a 2v2v2v2 replay on a beautiful map Dagorlet in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. It's pretty much like a free for all situation now, but everybody has a teammate. So we have 8 players in 4 different teams. We have Gondor and Rohan combination, we have Isengard and Gondor combination, we have another Isengard and Gondor combination, and last but not least Mordor and Gondor combination. So we have actually four out of four factions, including in this eight player, you know, 2v2v2v2 situation, Fiesta. And every single team has at least one Gondor. Gondor, we have four of them. And we have one Mordor, one Rohan, and two Isengard. So pretty interesting because Gondor camps. And as you can see, we have no castle situation here. We have actually camps. Gondor camp is the most vulnerable camp at the beginning of the game because we have only four towers to defend yourself, while Mordor, Isengard, and also Rohan have plenty more outside, you know, protection sentry towers, 450 gold, um, which means more durability for the camps of the set factions. We have Isengard facing against Gondor in this situation, and this Isengard is gonna face against this Rohan. So what is the plan? The plan is to rush early game i think with isengard he's gonna use warchan on these two uruks and will creep this one and try to steal this one at the same time warchan and uruks are just too strong even without warchan uruks are just the strongest and the fastest swordman in the game but elvin wood will deny and nullify the bonuses they get from the warchan who's gonna get the last hit? it's gonna be very important for gondor to get the last hit he's waiting 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 Oh, nice micro from the Gondor player Principino. He will be able to get the last hit, which is really important. Because if you lose the last hit, and you he lost one part of the money though. I mean, it's still good for Isengard, but I think Gondor could have lost the game right there. I'm telling you guys. <laughs> if the soldiers wouldn't get level 2, it would be a very bad situation. Isengard was also able to creep. He got three parts of the treasure, two of this and one of this. So he got lots of money, which is very good. Because now he will be able to recruit some Berserkers, which are very strong early game units. And obviously in the 8-player map, we have only 80 available command points for the good factions and 160 available command points for the evil factions. Evil factions have always doubled the command points available in compared to a good faction. We've expanded the Uruk pit. One of those crazies has just been spawned. We expanded the Uruk pit. We have a level 3 Uruk pit now for 50% faster build speed. And the Berserker has the fastest recruit speed of the game. Uh, I mean, maybe Lumber Mill workers have a bit faster, but they are coming out very soon, you know? We have a Berserker here and two Uruks. They might actually go for a big push. The Berserker doesn't get the chance to hit. It is a Hobbit, Peregrine took. <laughs> the full of a took. He's trying his best to defend the situation. But he killed one of the Berserkers, actually. <laughs> Dude, don't underestimate the Hobbit. Trust me on that one, guys. There is a reason why Aragorn, the king of Gondor, was going on his knees for Frodo Baggins and Samwise Gamgee. Maybe that doesn't sound right. But I mean, you know the scene. It's the end of the, the Return of the King, you know? So he's gonna use... Oh, that's a bad commitment. He should have used also the Uruks to take down this one. He might be still able to take it down. Very smart move from the Gondor player to get mounted with Faramir. This way he, you deal more damage to the Swartman, in this case to the Uruks. And also you can trample them down. Uh, close, but not close enough. And Isengard will be able to save his ally. Only one blacksmith has been destroyed. That's why you shouldn't be greedy, you know? You need to try to take down this is the heart. Like, pretty much this is the heart of every single castle camp or outpost, because the second you destroy this, your opponent cannot build and construct anything in the, in the camp anymore until he rebuys this, which is also very expensive to be rebought, you know? Okay, we have a counter push situation now. Uh, one combo, lots of Berserkers, as you can see and tell, and one Faramir, who is here just to show his quality. We have also King Theodine, who is already level 3 on the other side of the map. We have an outpost for the Mordor player with an Orc Pit and Haradrims on top of the outpost and Double Furnace. And Isengard is under attack now. The Berserkers, they are war chanted, they are going to destroy this, which is a mistake in my opinion. You should try to go from front to back. Like, destroy these towers first, 
before you go for this one because there are too many towers even though the berserkers if you don't know they have like an arrow dodge chain so they can dodge a lot of arrows like nail from the matrix close <laughs> very close legit one person hp left and that is the hero is this gonna be the one from helm's deep helm's deep helm's deep helm's deep berserker dude the last hit did it the last it did it because we don't know that the, the citadels they can actually rebuild or repair themselves very fast so you want to make sure to burst it down you don't want to hurt it because if you can't finish it off it will be going up to 100 person once again in a few seconds and that's good for you know for the enemy team because that's gonna slow you down a little bit and it's gonna cost you like a thousand to the buy this which is a lot of money at the beginning of the game and he's gonna try to creep this with the berserker and capture this outpost too. I mean, we're just gonna, you know, grant you lots of money. In the meantime, we have other action going on. We have, oh, we have a level four Theodin King. And Eoma is level two and a half. So the second this dude gets level four, I mean, even now they are so strong because they have Rohirrim Archer combination with the Gondor Knights. It's a mobile faction uh, teammates. Gondor and Rohan. Gondor going for a stable for the Gondor Knights. And Rohan going also for a stable for the Rohirrim and Rohirrim Archers. There comes the glorious charge moment, the best buff in the game for the calf, and they are gonna be not only hitting like a truck, but also they're gonna become almost immortals. You know, they are very tanky now, they can absorb lots of damage, and once again, we are talking about a Gondor camp, which has the least durability, the least defense, you know? I think it's a mistake to commit on this one, it's a very tanky building, and the Rohirrim have no upgrades yet. Now the glorious charge is gone, the Mordor needs to support his ally with either runes, or a Nazgul. Oh, he's going for the Nazgul indeed. The captain, the Nazgul captain riding the fell beast. And there is no counter yet. This Rohirrim archers without fire arrows, they cannot really hurt this. And there is no Eowyn and no Faramir. So Eowyn, Faramir combination, the wife and the husband, with the warning arrow from Faramir and the smite from Eowyn, can actually one-shot a Nazgul. You know, that's like the dream team, you know what I'm saying? Still better love story than Twilight. Oh my goodness, in the meantime, we have a Uruk a Pikeman combination, which is one of the most cost efficient combinations in the game. Um, you know, combining units is not always great because as you get something from it, you also lose something from it. What you get though is very uh, great in a situation like this. Uh, first of all, you get a really cost reduction because you need to only upgrade one Uruk, for example, with Forge Blades and Heavy Armor, and the second you combine the upgraded Urukai. With an unupgraded pikeman, the pikeman also receives all the upgrades. You know, that's very cost efficient. And also they are quite tanky and beefy. But they lose the ability to change formation. The pikeman cannot use porcupine formation anymore. The uruks, they cannot use the shieldwall formation anymore. But keep in mind, that combining units will also give them some sort of bonuses. They get additional armor a bit. They lose movement speed in exchange. But overall, in a situation like this, look how much devastating amount of damage they actually dealt to the green Isengard player. He's almost taken out of the game. Luckily, he has an outpost here, which means he gets some money, but, you know, it's still a lot of damage. Now they can snowball on this lead eventually and try to finish him off. Losing a camp will lose you so much time. Nazgul is getting in safety from Eowyn, who was chasing him down. If the brother and the sister, and Faramir, <laughs> the husband, <laughs> he is on foot. And the, the woman is <laughs> riding on the horse. Okay, we have runes with the Witch King leadership. They are also quite tanky now. But Witch King also has to pay attention, you know. Eowyn is the best counter. I mean, not the best counter, but the cheapest counter in the game. I mean, basically, Eowyn's smite ability is almost enough. Uh, almost dealing the same amount of damage to the Witch King like the Easter Light from Gandalf. But you gotta keep in mind that Eowyn only costs you 1200, you know. You can recruit her so easily. And yet, she's one of the best counters to the Nazgul. Okay, no man can kill me, and I am no man, you know? We need also Gandalf from the Gondor player, he's going for it. So Gandalf, the Maya, is also no man, technically, right? I mean, he's using the, the body of a man, I mean, you can, maybe he's a male, but I think the prophecy, when it was saying, no man can kill Witch King, I think it was meant about the race of men or elves, you know what I'm saying? But let's be real, Gandalf is not an elf, not a dwarf, not a human not a man, because he is actually an angel, so I think he is not considered 
as a, as a man in this prophecy. I think he's still able to kill Witch King solo. Okay, there comes the big commitment. We have Gandalf, Elvin, Theodine, Elma, Faramir, Glorious Charge, Rohirrim Arches, Gondor Knights. They have two, one Nazgul and one Witch King and a couple of runes. Are they gonna be enough to defend this? I don't know. There comes the Visa Plus, but they are tanky enough with the Witch King leadership to not get one-shotted. They are also using the block formation to get a bit more armor stats. And the pikemen, they are quite tanky though. But the Haradrim Palace has been taken down. The, the troll cage is only level 1. Only one trebuchet could or catapult could make it out of the siege fort before getting destroyed. The slaughterhouses in this game are so weak in compared to furnaces, which makes the Mordor camp or castle or outpost way more vulnerable in compared to a Isengard. Because Isengard primary resource buildings are actually furnaces. They are also way tankier. They have almost double the HP. You know? I mean, they have double the HP. 3000 health for a level 1 furnace and only 1500 health for a level 1 slaughterhouse. All these bugs, all this imbalanced stuff got actually fixed in the patch 2.22, but it's, you know, still great from time to time to cast those older replays. The model player is taking so much damage. So much damage. In the meantime, the Isengard player was able to recover. They have a Lourdes level 1, 2 combos with full upgrades, so they are trying to go ham. But he has no pikemen around. The mortal player will lose the camp. But he didn't lose the game yet. How? Oh, he was able to buy the outpost. Okay. I was wondering what is actually going on. Yeah, because the Gondo got rushed before, keep in mind. You know, he you know, pretty much got taken out of the game already. So he couldn't spot. It was a 2v1 situation. And Gondo couldn't assist his ally. But <laughs> the Mordor has literally nothing. I mean, the Witch King is a very strong and powerful hero, yes. But what can Witch King do against Elvin and Gandalf, you know? They can one-shot you. In the meantime, this gonna play is going for Faramir, Boromir, and Peregrine Took. The three infantry heroes for the Gondor faction. The two captains and the full of a Took. The person who is made to annoy Gandalf, who is also on the field, by the way. Almost level 6. He has leadership for the nearby allied units. And two combos with Lourdes. Might be enough to do some shenanigans. Oh, 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 Nazgul, 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 Nazgul. He's not even using it. It was on cooldown, that's why. The Nazgul has been sniped. In the meantime, before commitment. Now they are trying to take down this uh, gunner player. There is a lightning sword coming from Oats. This is the, um, the black gunner player. The glorious charge. Look at them shining bright like a diamond. They are going ham inside the jeans. They are trying to finish off this game. And I believe the Gondor player can legit... I mean, he couldn't do anything for the entire game. You know what I'm saying? He got rushed. Rohan is a much more powerful faction in a situation like this than Gondor is. He got kind of unlucky. He lost the creeping at the beginning of the game. Uh, he couldn't get the last hit with the soldiers, which meant... Which means in a situation like this that... I am no man. <laughs> Eowyn. Going ham. Faramir is proud of you, my dear Eowyn. All you gotta do now is learn cooking. Okay, so they are preparing now. Uh, we're gonna have a clash between this Isengard and Gondor against this Isengard and Gondor. Let's see who's gonna come ahead. This Gondor doesn't have Gandalf yet, right? No, he has no Gandalf, no Boromir, no Faramir. So, is this Isengard will have Lord Saruman, very powerful, obviously, and also Gandalf, which is a hero you don't own yourself right now. They have also Boromir and Faramir. And the second Boromir gets level 4, you have additional 60% damage. I never understood why the people never ever recruited Boromir. I think he's, he's super underrated. I mean, in the patch 2.2, he got plenty of buffs. He's very strong now. He's one of the most useful heroes in the game because he had a couple of reworks, movement speed buff, damage and armor buff. You know, he's pretty strong now. And also the fear effects are a bit more reliable in the patch 2.22, but even on the patch 1.06, Boromir was a very strong hero, but yet he was so underrated. By the way, this gonna play has been defeated as the first player. Yeah, he got, he got defeated, actually. He got crushed. <laughs> now, we have only seven players left. And this Mordo is teamless. Like, he lost the teammate. And he has only an outpost, which is kind of keeping him alive. But I don't think uh, this is going to be a lo <laughs> long thing, you know? He will lose eventually very soon. But they kind of ignore the outpost. They let him live. And they want to go ham on the Isengard player Dexter, who has army around this area. And until that's the mobility advantage, you understand? Like, the thing is that they need to move now all the way back to this area. And in the meantime, this army from Gondor Rohan, they can actually even finish off the camp completely. They can ignore the army and keep focusing on the buildings. Okay. Oh, he stole them. Fight for me and I will reward you. There comes the abilities. They are trying to chunk 
but there comes the heal from the gunner player to save Saruman. We have a lane, lane, cock. Oh my goodness, Gandalf the White has gone inside the jeans. And where is the cripple when we needed it? I think he missed the cripple or something. It, you know, Lourdes got chunked. Saruman gets crushed. This Gandalf is popping off, by the way. We have level almost 9 Gandalf, really close for level 10. Aragorn is chasing Lourdes, just like in the films, trying to revenge. Yes, sir, he will get the kill. Actually, Legolas killed him this time. He's revenging Boromir. And now the Isengard player lost everything. And the Gondor player, look at this. It's like they are kind of teaming up a little bit. I mean, I don't know if this is intended or not, but I think it's kind of crazy, you know? Because what a, what a timing. They were focusing on the Isengard. Isengard had to rotate. But then, as they rotated into this area, the Gondor player got crushed. <laughs> so, dude, in a few minutes, actually, from an 8 player 2v2v2v2 2v2 2v2 situation, we will have only 4 players remaining on the field. Mordor is still kind of inside the game a little bit with the outpost here, you know. He's trying to revive his witch kings and Asgul's and trying to participate in the fighting a little bit, but in reality, he's out of the game. And now we have a situation between Gondor and Isengard against Gondor and Rohan because this Gondor uh, and this Isengard actually now he's still in the game. And also, now nah, the Gondor player got defeated, the Gondor player left. And as you can see, this is the same player now, the Isengard. When you leave before your last building falls, you give all your army and your money and your buildings to your ally. And I think that's what happened. And Dexter, the Isengard player, is trying to rebuild his army. He has money to revive uh, Saruman and Lourdes once again, but he will need ages to get back into the game, you know? <laughs> that's the last build, that's the last outpost from the Isengard, uh, from the Mora player, and he's about to lose it. Okay. That's gonna be quite interesting now because the most powerful teams, the Gondor Rohan from the top left against the Gondor Eisen from the bottom right. So they are across the map. We have a explosive mine coming. We know, you know, that might cause some drama and kind of explosive jokes later on. Let's see. Lourdes almost level 5. It's gonna be a huge power spike if Lourdes gets level 5. We have Faramir level 3, Boromir level 3. Unfortunately, they couldn't get any experience because keep in mind that both the captains of Gondor, Faramir and Boromir, they joined the battlefield while being level 3 from the beginning. So Boromir needs only one level for the leadership part, and Boromir, uh, Faramir needs the two levels. But, you know, let's be real here. <laughs> uh, you know, leveling up Faramir is way easier, because he's a ranged hero with the bonding arrow, low cooldown ability, you can, you know, use it over and over again, and eventually get the experience you need. But this army is looking scary, my dude. The only thing that can kind of stop them is when... Um, hold on. The Mina, he has, reason, he has freezing rain. Okay, that's gonna be like an um, ultimate counter to what the Gondor Rohan team have to offer. This army is looking legit, super OP and extremely strong right now. But keep in mind that the only thing that makes this army very strong is the leadership bonuses they get from Aragorn, from Theorin, from Elma, from Gandalf. You know, all the leadership is able to stack with each other. And that's why they are glowing, shining bright like a diamond. But the second, the Green Isengard player Mina is pressing on that one legendary button. The freezing rain button. Pew! Click on it. Make it rain, baby boy. And all your leadership bonuses are goners. You have even trebuchet upon the field. From Oats, which is very good. That's gonna be a great counter to the Isengard uh, units. The mortal player was capturing this. <laughs> Felix Anius, the mortal player doesn't want to be defeated. He want to be participating in the fight only with his flying creatures. That's all he has to offer. He got his teammate defeated at the beginning of the game pretty much. And uh, now he is alone. The, the, the lone warrior, you know? Look, Legolas even hitting like a track level 6, dude. You don't want to underestimate Legolas because he can be used as a hero sniping and hero killer hero himself. If there is a Gandalf from the enemy team or Saruman who is causing problems, just the second you see them with your Legolas, click on them, right click on them, and you can see Legolas slowly but surely, not slowly, fast actually, look this. Spear throw, hog strike. There is so much, you know, abilities going on in this game. Okay, the outpost has been literally demolished in a second. We have Felix Anius, the model player, up to five power points, but he has zero defense. He will not be able to get power points because he has one out of 240 units under his control. 
We have Erendil, the Blue Gonda player. He's up to three and a half power points after the Gun of the Bites in the Elven Ally special summon. We have Dexter, the Isengard player who got just his camp back once again. He's up to almost 12 power points. He needs around eight power points for the, for the Balrog. And we have Donadine, the Rohan player, who is up to almost 7 power points after the Elven Wood and Elven Alliance. So he might go for the Ents now, or he can save a bit more to go for the, uh, for the Cloud Break. And then, last but not least, the Gondor player Oats. He is up to 4 power points after the Eagles. So he needs only 6 power points for the Army of the Dead. Okay, let's see. I mean, this is gonna be a, like a really, really strong army. But you don't want to leave your trebuchet like that undefended, you know? There are so many explosive mines, my man. Oh, he was trying to go for a sneaky play. Oh, 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 my screen was literally, oh. <laughs> this is so fiesta. Dude, explosive mines are so unique to this game. I love them. I love them. The amount of shenanigans and crazy stuff you can make with them happen is something else. You understand? I like them so much. That is even Gimli, who is level 6 by the way, you shouldn't underestimate him. He's gonna miss the Lightning Sword, level 9 Gandalf, really close to level 10. The Isengard army doesn't look very strong, but Freezing Rain has been activated now. That means no leadership available for this Gondor and Rohan team. The Trample is incoming, we see Gimli kinda interrupting his own leap attack, but even with the Glorious Charge, all alone, and even the Freezing Rain I mean, they still get crushed, literally crushed. Lords has to cripple somebody, the Eagles, the Eagles are coming, they're gonna chase and hunt down the enemy Gandalf. Gandalf is fast, but the Eagles are faster, there is nothing that can beat uh, and keep up with the speed of the flying creatures like Eagles and Nazgûls and Witch King. They can always catch everyone. Heal is gonna be used, uh, the Nazgûl is getting chunked from all these level 3 furnaces and towers, and the Gandalf might be able to survive this. Yeah, he will be able to survive that, but keep in mind that heal is on cooldown. Eowyn is getting chunked, Aragorn is no Atelas, Eowyn gets sniped by, by Lourdes, who is now level almost 7. We have almost level 8 Aragorn. In the meantime, this Gandalf got crippled. But how we want to finish him off, that's the main question. He's nearly level 10. The cripple effect is gone, the duration, uh, leap attack is going to be missed once again. This Gimli is potentially, again, still drunk from the film in the, in the Helm's Deep, you know, after the celebration. Lourdes will get sniped, Legolas hitting like a truck from downtown, he's now level 7, has the arrow volley unlocked, he's being the outpost, you know, he has the outpost here, <laughs> that's what keeps him alive with the, with the camp, and Mordor is trying to recover a little bit over time, you know, I feel so bad, he's so lonely, because look at the vision control he got, he doesn't even get the chance to see what is going on on the other side of the map, like that's all he's able to see, he has the outpost here with three furnaces, He's able to see a little bit from the outpost, but he has zero clue what is happening on the other side of the map. But he has finally darkness. And Mordor is normally a very strong faction in a situation like that. But keep in mind that there are two Isengards included in this 8 player uh, 2v2v2v2 2v2 2v2 situation. That means there are two specific players that can kind of negate your existence by pressing the one legendary button, the Freezing Ring. The best ability in the game when it comes to deal with leadership. Nostalgres on your face, son. And that goes to War of Power. And if you are wondering why abilities are recharging from the beginning, it's a um, uh, thing you get from the Gan of the White Power Point. As you can see, powers recharge twice as quickly. So that's why they start at 50% instead of zero. If you if they would be gray, or if he would be gray, it would start from the beginning, you know? But even now the War of Power is just like a really long a cooldown. 19 power points for Dexter. Even though he got his ally defeated a long time ago, he's actually up power point wise. And the thing is, if you lose heroes with the evil factions, especially with Isengard, if you lose your Saruman and Lord, especially Saruman, right? If you lose Saruman, the amount of power points you gain from it, as you lost them, you get like two, almost three power points just from losing your Saruman. So there is a strategy. It's called inting strategy. The second you realize, okay, I'm very close for the for the Balrog, what you can do is you can int your Saruman, just run him down into the enemy lines and say, oh, oops, I didn't pay attention, but it was actually genie, you know, evil genius idea. Then boom, you unlock your <laughs> Balrog without ever killing anything from your opponent. There comes the, Vo the AOD from the Gunner player, um, Olds, the black or the gray Gunner player. The green Isengard's Lord is running for his life. There are Gandalfs. He's gonna chase him. He's gonna chase him. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Cripple him, cripple him, cripple him, cripple him. 
Is he going to be able to cripple? No! He wanted to. He wanted to. Do you see now? What, uh, cloud break. The sun is rising. Oh, but Dexter. Dexter is killing stuff here. I think he will get power points for the, for the Balrog, right? Let me check. Yeah, he has the Balrog now. But the question is, when and where is he going to use it? Is he going to use it defensively? Yes, he will use it defensively. The boom! Let's see. I want to see this. Aragorn. Aragorn. Let, let's see. Aragorn is so tanky. Watch this. Look how he takes almost no damage. Watch this. He's going to take the full force. He's like Thor from the Marvel films. You understand? He can take the force of a full star. That's the strongest attack in the existence of the game. Nothing is strong as that. A Balrog auto attacking you while being ignited and dealing 200% more damage. No hero can survive that. But Aragorn is not a normal human being. Hello, Dark. That's my old. I mean, it doesn't mean he's immortal. <laughs> it doesn't mean he's immortal. I'm just like pointing out that he's so tanky. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay? Balrog, the demon of the ancient world. Nearly one shotting a full outpost like that? Holy quackamole. Oh, Gimli got crippled. Lords gets. Boom! Two Gandalfs. What can men do against such a reckless seed? Level 10 Gandalf. Water power is almost back up. Lourdes is running for his life using Bloodthirsty. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because Bloodthirsty can give you also or will give you actually extra armor. Which might give you the extra stats to survive those kind of bursts. But in this case, we are not we are not talking about a regular hero. It's Gandalf level 10. Easter lighting you. Which is the strongest single target ability in the game. So it can chunk buildings, heroes, units, everything. Creatures, monsters. And it's a point on click, right? You can't miss it. Even if when you cast it now against the Nazgul, and the Nazgul ends up flying all the way to this location, but after you cast it, after the animation is going off, he, you can kill him. But there are abilities like, for example, from, you know, obviously Saruman Fireball or Lord's Cripple, they have like a limited range. You can miss them if the target is out of the range. Spear throw, spear throw on Saruman, who is level 6, but, you know, he can't really do much when there is Ganoff who can just easter light you and you will get chunked and um, what is happening with this isengard look at this camp situation you see like we have like a trebuchet around the allies camp it's like an old uh, annoying strategy from the gondor but you can do with gondor in when you want to be annoying in Lim, you can actually put trebuchet in between all your structures why are you asking because if you put a trebuchet right here on the spot it's so hard for him to reach the building is gonna body block, this building is gonna body block, the citadel is gonna body block all the time, you know? It's very hard to reach this area. Okay, the Isengard, I cannot believe it, Dexter is still in the game and so is Mordor. Maybe they were not trying to finish him off, but the Mordor shouldn't be underestimated, dude. Like, he's gonna build an army worthy of Mordor very slowly, but surely, he's uncontested. He's spamming catapults like a madman. He knows they are... Dude, in the 1.06 version of the game, the catapults, the siege weapons generally speaking, were the most OP units in the entire game with no downsides. They were cheap, they were always destroying everything they hit, including heroes, and if you lost them, it's not a big deal because they were almost giving no power points when they got destroyed to your opponent. So they were considered for me like a power point fishing unit. They can fish you power points like, no, like no, nothing else, you know what I'm saying? That's why we nerfed them. In the patch 2.22 we didn't nerf their damage output that much i mean we did against heroes but what we did to them is that it's now more rewarding for the player who destroys them so when you lose your trebuchet or catapults or ballista in the patch 2.22 you actually will now give more power points and experience points to your opponent gandalf he got crippled as a heal he has water power eagles are coming and the eagles are gonna revenge the gandalf from the blue gondo team player or oh, in the eagles dude the splash damage is crazy you know you want to be split it when you see eagle summon like that you want to split your army a little bit there comes the war of, um aod summon whose aod is that actually from erendil from the from the blue gonna player that's what it is okay the Valrock is almost available for dexter uh do not die the rohan player is also now his aod um but he lost a lot of his army actually Aragorn is still alive. He's also level 10. Dude, what a fiesta game. We have a level 10 hero fiesta. He's trying to... Uh, very smart move. You see what he's trying to do? He's trying to be around his own EOD a little bit. From the special summon he used. 
So when the eagle is attacking him, the eagle is going to attack automatically, unwillingly, also the EOD. And when you do that, you get chunked. But it was smart, but not smart enough. He just lost them. He lost Eoma, he lost his Aragorn, and Legolas, and Eobin, and Gimli. He lost literally every hero, and he had a crazy eco, but after reviving every one of them, he is dropping down to around 1,000 resources only. And he has zero units on the field. Zero out of 80. Oats, the gunner player, has AOD available once again. He lost his Gandalf, level 10. Has a really long revive time. Uh, the Isengard player is kind of out of the game all the, all the time, you know? He's up to 12 power points only. And uh, Felix Anius is up to one power point after the darkness. But he's now making a move. <laughs> Assemble Forces of Mordor. The age of normal units is over. The age of the siege weapon spam has come. Dude, look at this army. This, this is a joke. This is a joke, guys. Do, do you see this army? Couple of uh, couple of orc archers, drummer troll. In the patch 1.06, drummer troll used to give leadership to the catapults too. So with drummer troll being around your catapults, your catapults would actually deal 50% more damage, and be 50% more tanky too. This army. I mean, we're gonna take a look into this in a few seconds. Once they are involved into a fight, into an epic battle, I want to see how many power points he will gather with this army. He has a couple of trolls, but not many of them. Almost his entire population actually being invested into, <laughs> into the catapults. It's kind of crazy. The Isengard player is trying to, um, you know, kind of get back into the game. He's trying to revive his Saruman. Oh, I heard Balrog. This one is actually from Dexter, from the... Orange Isengard player. And what is the lesson, children, that we are learning from this? Don't let your opponent live. Don't let him live. Oh, that's sweet. You think you can kill him? That's Aragorn, Arton's son. He's gonna use AOD from his thing. Look, do you see what I'm talking about? Dude, this is even a joke. Guys, this dude right there, he has just tanked a atom atomic bomb, you understand? He tanked an atomic bomb. He tanked a Balrog breath fire while ignited. And then people are kind of flaming me because we nerfed this armor from Anduril's Sword a little bit in the patch 2.22. Look how tanky he is. Look how tanky he is. Is this even allowed to be the tanky? That's a 20 power, 20 power point ultimate special summon from the Spellbook of Evil. Oh, but he's walking into the breath fire. Every time I'm talking about Aragorn being tanky, the guy is in tank. He's gonna miss the arrow volley, unfortunately. We have a fight in the middle in the in the meantime. We missed the fight from Mordor. I don't know what happened to the <laughs> to the catapults, but I think the eagles just killed him. But Mordor couldn't actually fish any power points from the situation. He's he was at one power point, he's now up to almost four. That is the Ganoff back in the business. Level 10, he's gonna use the lightning sword. He's gonna hit Nazgul's, but there are just too many creatures attacking him now, including uh, the Rohirrim from the Gondor summon. Five power points. He's gonna use the Easter egg to kill one of the eagles. That is Gandalf coming. Uh, Legolas coming, I mean. Hey, dude, I don't know. Guys, let me know what you think. It's kind of like a mess, right? I mean, it's really hard for me to focus on a, on a fight because there is so much action happening, even though two of the players got defeated. Can you imagine? The two of them got defeated so early and the other six are remaining on the field now for a long time. We have, we have only two teams remaining. So these two guys are a team and these two guys are a team. But this guy is solo. And this guy is solo. But nobody is trying to finish off the solo guy. I mean, I don't mind about Mordor, but I think you need to try to defeat the orange Isengard player Dexter. That's very important because he has the Balrog summon. He will, if you don't defeat him very soon, he will recharge it eventually and use it again. And might be able to finish you off this time. The amount of damage he just dealt with the Balrog is immense, you know. You know, you losing your Aragorn right after he joined the battlefield is a big thing. The Trebuchet are moving. <laughs> Gandalf. This one is level also 10, by the way. Is this from Oats? Yeah, it's from Oats. Oh, he got crippled. Oh, 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 the eagles. Do you see the eagle damage, dude? The Ballista finished. That's good for Isengard, though. Actually, it, what is this Mina? He just got so many power points. If you kill a level 10 Gandalf like that, the amount of power points reward you will get from it. I mean, you can see it yourself. He's now up to 17 and a half power points. He needs only two more, two and a half power points more. To get his own Balrog summon unlocked. That's kind of nutty. We see now at this point of the game you can hear everywhere AOD here, AOD there. We have AOD from Aragorn level 10. We have AOD from this Gondor player. We have AOD from this Gondor player. We have Balrog from this Isengard player. We have very soon Balrog from this Isengard player. So we have ultimate summons pretty much everywhere. 
the Nazgûls are being annoying. Oh, Faramir joining the battlefield to show, to show his quality. Look, he's gonna chunk one of the Nazgûls watchers. Boom, you see, it's chunking decently, even though he's level, I mean, he's level 10, okay. Okay. Oh, Eowyn trying to save the husband. Oh, 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 oh. Look, 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 look. Pew, pew, pew. You see, if you... I lied before. Remember when I was saying uh, Easter Dead is the strongest single target? I mean, it's still true because it's a point and click and you can only hit one of them. But if you catch ever with your arrow volley from Legolas, one single target, a hero, for example, like Witch King, Nazgul, or even Gandalf, you can one-shot Gandalf. So if you hit Gandalf exclusively with your arrow wind, you can 100 to 0 him even to heal. He can't survive that. Because the arrow volley has like a really long extended um, attacking thing. So you can attack pew, 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 pew for like 8 seconds. And every time it chunks, chunks, chunks. And even if Gandalf is healing some of the damage, he will still kill, get killed, you know? Oh, the Isengard was trying to go ham, but AOD will be summoned. Saruman is trying to blast them or something? Nice, with that blast, dude. <laughs> spear throw her. Spear throw him. Elvin. Great defense, no problemo. But who would have thought that this game is gonna take a while? And imagine, I think that would be the most epic situation if the if the solo player Dexter or if the solo player uh, Felix Anius could actually come ahead and win this game. I would I think that's gonna be quite hilarious if this is gonna be the case. But I don't know. The question is, this dude, he's still not at 20 power point yet. I mean, I think Dexter just used like for the third or fourth time his Balrog before this Isengard got the chance to use it once. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. When I say to you guys, be involved into fighting. When you play a game, a 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, or 3v4 all, or 2v2, 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 like this was the case in this one, what you want to do is you want to involve yourself, include yourself in every single battle that, that is. Because your ultimate goal in this game, it's an older game and it's kind of... Uh, kind of evolving around the power points, you know? So, if you want to be coming ahead and win more games frequently, you want to include and involve yourself into as many battles as you potentially can. Because if you don't, you will lose the power point battle and then you will lose eventually the game. Beautiful, uh, Legolas assisting le level almost 10. He lost the Witch King in one of the Nazgul's and Dexter is going for... He doesn't even bother making normal <laughs> archers anymore. He's just going... Trying to rush this <laughs> Rohan with the Pikeman Urukai combination, but he made a mistake. Oh, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to uh, group them. Oh, the Balrog! Pew! The animation, dude. Guys, let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about the Balrog spawn animation from a game that was made in 2004. It makes me think even though i'm not a big fan of ea games because of the decision making they had and also the license thing they messed up a little bit how can you lose the license like that i don't i don't get it but they made this game in 2004 now we are in 2022 you understand it's like 18 years 18 years since this game got released okay imagine if they would now in at this point in 2022 if they would decide to make a new battle for middle earth game with the new technology engine, with the new art and design stuff, which is available right now in the market. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? This Balrog animation is already looking dope. But can you imagine a new one from 2022? Dude, uh, Aragorn. He's, this Balrog doesn't like Aragorn, actually. He, he just doesn't like Aragorn. He, he didn't use the Bleedmaster. That's why he got killed. With Bleedmaster, he would have been able to survive this. But actually... Oh... Hold on. How this guy got defeated? Did he leave the game? I think he left the game. So he gave he gave all his money to his ally. The Gondor player just left the game for whatever reason. I don't know why. Did he lose his Gandalf before he got defeated? Or before he left? Because he didn't get defeated since his camp is still remaining on the field. But if you leave, leave the game, you still count as defeated. And as you can see, you give all your money and your base to your ally. However, he cannot, he has no access to your heroes. So he can only control your heroes if they were on the field before you left the game. But they, he cannot revive the heroes you lost, you know? That's not possible. We hear another Balrog now. Finally, from Mina, from the green Isengard player, he's getting the chance to summon his Balrog. If a freezing rain situation. Hold on, is Felix Anius also defeated? Yeah, the Mordor player got finally defeated too. I missed that one, to be honest. Now we have this... 
two players against one against one. I mean, even though Rohan has like two camps, realistically, he has a Gonda camp and a Rohan camp, but he's still alone. Erendil, oh, okay, boom, fireball on, on, on Theodin King, who's level 9, spear throw from Elma, X throw from Gimli, like, is there life from Gandalf, Gimli, do it, Gimli, 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 no, they were so close, it was actually so close. <laughs> <laughs> One more out there, Gimli, Speedy Gonzalez. Yes, uh, Slay on cooldown. Gimli was so bad in the patch 1.06. He was so bad. He was the worst hero for 2500. He was so bad. Because in order to get your Slayer unlocked, which is the only power spike you had, without Slayer you would be useless, but you gotta get level 7. Which, how you wanna do that? You understand? You can't. Like, you are immobile, you have zero movement speed, your extra would deal almost no damage, it would take you legit ages against a new player eventually to get level 7, against a good player it would be out of question, you couldn't. Okay, we hear another AOD, this one is actually from Rohan to defend the camp, but he lost once again almost all his heroes, the only hero remaining on the field is actually Aragorn, who is back on the menu, he's gonna use the... He's chunking, dude, I mean, like, it's debatable, you understand? It's debatable and question of the day guys who you think has a more epic level 10 ability as you guys know in battle for middle of one there are only two heroes with a level 10 what is this man <laughs> there are only two heroes with a level 10 ability one of them is being Gandalf with the water power and the other one is actually aragorn with level 10 off breaker or one battalion of the eod special summon and the question is which one do you prefer the most or more for me it depends on the situation Sometimes, in a one-on-one in -on -one situation, I believe the War of Power is a bit more useful because, you know, you are mobile with Gandalf. You can write into the enemy lines and use it. But that's a good thing and also at the, at the same time a bad thing because you need to write into them to surround them and, you, you know, deal the maximum damage with your War of Power, which means until you get it off, there is animation time, you will end up taking damage. And Gandalf is like a weird uh, thing about himself that when he casts a power point or, or a spell, he actually cannot move for like 3 seconds afterwards, which can cause him being dead. And War of Power doesn't one-shot them if they have lots of leadership, you know, and doesn't kill heroes. But EOD doesn't care about your leadership bonuses. It will one-shot your army regardless how much leadership they got. Oh, fully charged lightning sword. Heal is gonna be used, but this guy is also level 10. Oh, he's so tanky, man. He took the fully charged lightning sword on him without the blade master being available and now he got killed with blade master he can easily take a fully charged lightning sword and easter light on top of that and if you don't pay attention if he gets the chance to hit your gun three times with blade master and andri you will die he put legolas inside the outpost actually <laughs> oh look snipe snipe Ganaf, snipe Ganaf. he's sniping him come on snipe him i wish he would have sniped him with Legolas. You can right-click from the outpost on Ganoff and try to snipe him. Oh, he killed Legolas with War of Power on your face, and That is Balrog. From Dexter, you want to party speed too? I, I still can't believe it that he is not defeated yet. Can you guys imagine that? That's kind of crazy. What is this Balrog doing? He's trying. I mean, to be honest, guys, it was a massacre of a game. You know, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, it, I mean, to be honest with you, I thought the Gondor Rohan team, they're gonna win this. I don't know why this guy decided to leave. I don't know that. I think they had the chance, because this Gandalf was level 10 for a long time, he had AOD. This Rohan has AOD, with the, with, you know, with the combined strength of Rohan and Gondor, the mobility advantage they got, they had definitely the potential and the chance to win this. But then he randomly decided to leave. A couple of mistakes were made, which... Kinda is normal in a situation like that, it's a it's a long game, you know, 2v2v2v 2v2 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 situation. The second you move out, there is a chance someone somebody else might rush your base, so you need to rotate, which I believe is one of the main reasons why the mobility advantage is just very really important. Dexter gives up finally, he's gonna demolish every one of the buildings, and he has been finally defeated. Now, we have only three players remaining, uh, Donadine being the solo one, against a team of Erendil and his opponent, uh, Mina. Okay. So, Erendil has the AOD, the Cloud Break, the Rohirrim summon, and the Eagle summon available. And here's a level 10 Gandalf too. Now we hear the AOD from, from Aragorn. 
The Balrog got a beautiful. Um, oh my goodness, man. He's so tanky. He gets a quarter damage hit. Look, he will chunk. He will chunk him. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Pew. Pew. You, you see? Every auto attack from Aragorn is like a, like a, like a truck. Literally. Like literally a truck. And he would have killed him. The reason why he couldn't kill him is because Balrog has like this knockback. You know what I'm saying? He can knock the target back with his whip. With his bleed, with his auto attacks, he can knock them back. Uh, but if he couldn't, you know, Aragorn would have been able to win the 1v1 situation. And there comes the commitment. It's the one-man army he has. He's gonna get chunked. With the eagles are the, the hero killers in this game. The, the amount of damage they deal to heroes is kind of crazy. I mean, Gandalf um, would die in a second. Aragorn is tanky, but even Aragorn is getting chunked a lot. And he's gonna eventually die, right? Yeah. Eagles are super OP in this game, you know? <laughs> ah. Oh, oh, look, 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 I'm telling you, I'm telling you, look, look, he even healed him, he even healed him, did you guys see this? That's what I was talking about, he even healed him, it's a level 10 Gandalf, he got healed back to 100% HP, and all Legolas was hitting him with is the arrow wind, I'm telling you guys, you gotta trust me on stuff, you know, I, I, I know what I'm talking about, I'm telling you, arrow wind, the best ability when it comes to catch a target solo, you catch one of them, it's over for them, over. And you kill the most expensive hero in the game. Just like that. Holy guacamole. I mean, nobody is capturing additional camps. So the only person with two camps is the Rohan player. He has a Gunner camp, but it might be defeated very soon. There is the EOD uh, from the Gunner player Erendil. And Tunadine has the EOD, which can stall him one more fight. He's trying. They are trying to catch up this Rohirrim Arches, but... Uh, that's the that's the downside of the EOD special summon, right? Because it's very really hard to reach the mobile units. While Balrog, um, it's kind of debatable. What is better, Balrog or the EOD? I mean, we, we made them, we made so in the patch 2.22, the EOD is like a hero, uh, you know, army killing ability with almost no damage to the buildings. And Balrog is being the, uh, the summon to kill structures i mean you can still summon balrog underneath of the enemy army and the spawn damage you know after this boom you know you, you will still one shot everything around him but he is not very <laughs> the brother and sister yeah well, we spear throws the ballista army is coming though pew look that's a strategic cripple them and use your ballistas to shoot them down but with the glorious charge you're so chunky and tanky too look how many how many ballista dude you gotta kill this toro hit him they're gonna finish off all your ballista they get one shot at the ballistas in a melee fight Dude, I like the strategy. Imagine that. You cripple, then you use your artillery, your ballista, trebuchet, or catapults. Pew, pew, pew. They cannot move. <laughs> but remember that Rohan is the, um, the AOT. So you can use it to save the day. Is Aragorn coming back anytime soon? Yeah, he will be back very, very soon. And also, the Isengard player, the green Isengard player, Mina, will have his Balrog summon available very soon. I mean, the problem is Aragorn at this point of the game... It's like legit a one-man army, you know, he's very strong. How much money does Donadan have? I mean, money is not a problem. Look at his resources. He has over 35,000. So he's rich like Elon Musk, you know? Okay, Donadan was forced to use the EOD summon defensively. And they are losing a lot of their time remaining. And it's like a real... Oh, you saw Farah when he was trying to show his quality. Using one arrow on the Blades Master. Or the Knife Fighter Legolas. Look at him. The Prince of the Mirkur Elves. Regenerating. He's level 10. I mean, for me, the MVP. After the move he made to Gandalf, definitely the MVP. And Rohan is just like very powerful heroes. I mean, I'm excluding, excluding Gimli in a situation like that. But even Gimli can be very reliable hero, you know, because he's chunky, tanky, and can absorb lots of pressure and damage. And with, you know, with the Slayer, you can catch up to every single infantry hero in the game and almost out damage every one of them. The only person or the only hero who would be able to 1v1, like a straight up 1v1, Gimli is Aragorn. But everybody else, like Lourdes, anybody, even Gandalf, can't fight Gimli with the Slayer. The Balrog. But here's Aragorn here, with the EOD. Fight for me and I will hold your oaths fulfilled. I summon you to fulfill your oath. Look, you see? Oh, but the EOD got killed. Look, look, Aragorn's damage. Look, Aragorn's damage. Look, 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 please, please, please. What, what is this? What is this damage? What is this damage, guys? 
the Balrog killed his one of one of his own uh, eagles, but he almost soloed the Balrog. Isn't this unbelievable? <laughs> That's kind of crazy if you ask me. And then people are complaining. Yeah, Shanks, you nerfed uh, Aragorn. But you gotta keep in mind, Aragorn is not only about dealing damage. He provides you sustain with Atelas. He can heal up nearby allied heroes around him. He has leadership. He has fear effect with the Elaine heal. Um, and he has the chance to summon EOD himself. Like, all of that for half the price of Ganoff, almost. Three and a half thousand, Ganoff costs you six thousand. And he's not only damaging, that's not the only thing. You have, you have seen the amount of damage he has dealt. Like, I'm telling you, three hits against Ganoff level 10, he would have killed him. But it's also about him being too tanky. Like, he has no downside. What is the downside? If he can't ride on a horse, uh, should we give him also the mount ability so he can ride and use Blade Master and EOD summon while being mounted? Can you imagine you can summon EOD on horse? <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine you have like EOD on Rohirrim on, on the on the on the rhythm arc horses so you can have like a riding EOD battalion running around the map in light speed and catching up to everything Aragon is definitely OP okay one of the camps has been defeated destroyed the last remaining camp is gonna be the next and then it's gonna be a GG situation and I wasn't expecting such an outcome I gotta be honest I didn't know that this Isengard is gonna win the game with this Gondor because they were so behind in the power point department the Gondor Rohan team they had the advantage from the minute one like the amount they, the amount of damage they dealt I mean they were pretty much taking out this Gondor player in like what two minutes of the game they were all about to finish off this Isengard player solo they just didn't let you know finish him which was their mistake in my opinion they should have just focused him down and finished him as soon as possible because let's be honest this Isengard player was dealing devastating amount of damage to this Rohan over and over again with the Balrog summon that's why you should never underestimate one of your opponents you should never give them the chance to recover you know Boromir oh finally level 5 <laughs> the captain of Gondor he will see the glory days of Gondor once more they are capturing every single outpost in the game and that's the cavalry as you can see, the more players are being defeated, the more command points are going to be available. So at the beginning of the game, the good factions have like had only 80 command points. But the command points are based on about how many people are involved into a game. So the least players, the more command points you will get. But anyways, GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out guys.